Alright, we got some more repeated cuts to make without a DRO. This is the slot I'm putting in a piece of 3x2 aluminum stock. Okay, the slot's one inch down, one inch wide, one inch from the bottom. I got one left to cut. I thought I'd quickly show you guys how I did it. So, what we first are going to do is set our block into our vise. Seat the block, make sure it's nice and tight on our parallels. All right, we'll bring the, the x axis over. Now, what I did. So I used a piece of uh, a zigzag to bring it in within just a little friction on the on the edge of my vise that's fixed. Okay, so then I set my zero. I then moved over uh, 0.625 for my cutter diameter. I then reset my zero again and went over one more inch. And there is my um, cheap DRO that I've been using there, okay, the dial indicator. Right, so right now we're set at the, the depth of my cut for the, the one inch to come to the bottom. Okay, so we're set to go uh, one inch from the bottom. Full depth of cut, uh, straight across, all right. And then what we'll do is we'll use my uh, dial indicator to move accordingly to get the one inch uh, depth of cut and width of cut. So the fixed jaw there hasn't moved, right? It's fixed, it's moved. I lock my x-axis for my cut. Let's make a cut. First pass is the heaviest as it initiates the it initiates the first full depth of cut and the full width of the 0.625 cutter. First cut. What I then do is I come over to my uh, depth gauge. So if you guys can see this, some people like to see that stuff. Zoom in. All right, that's about as close as I'm gonna maybe get you. I release my table, I set it for my zero, as this is now my base of cut. You guys get the parallax effect, right? Viewing on an angle, 
Okay, now I have to move it 190 thousandths. It's going to go backwards. So 100 and 90. 95 I'll go. Lock the table. My table locks a lot neater in this direction. So you can see it'll only move about 1 thousandths when I tighten it up. When I move my table in the other direction, in the y-axis and lock the table, it moves about 5 thousandths of an inch. Alright, so this is uh, half of my next cut. Alright, zoom out. So I can get back to that cutter view. Alright, so now we'll maintain that uh, the RPM of 700, but we'll increase the feed. Fine milling because my cutter is rotating in the direction as where it would want to pull my piece in towards itself so it would uh, possibly pick up some backlash but my machines are pretty heavy uh, the ways are pretty tight I'm not having any issues so I'll do uh, this will be fine milling and then my last cut will be uh, conventional milling So then what I do is I, uh, for my final cut, I get my uh, digital verniers and I have them set to my final dimension which is one inch and uh, seven thousandths. Okay, and I set that to zero. So then what I'm able to do is come in here, take a quick measurement. And my uh, digis there tell me that I have to minus or take another 189 thousandths of a cut, and I'll do that. I'll go over back to my to my homemade DRO here. Okay, see if I can zoom in there for you guys. Okay, so I'll break my my lock to go 189. I'll set my zero, tap it, make sure it's seated nicely. It moved a little bit. Okay, 189. So now I'll come in there. Table, like I said, only moves about a thousandths when I lock it. All right, we'll rip out that last cut. We'll check our parts, see how it fits. See if we can just swing over here. Okay, this will be a conventional milling where our cutter rotation will want to throw the piece away which keeps all the backlash and uh, the feet engaged nice and snug so it doesn't have a chance to suck up the backlash and possibly um, grab the piece.
see I'm getting a nice finish uh, doing the conventional milling as well. that has to fit in there and I got a nice fit okay all right so there we have eight pieces all done on a mill with no digital readout all within very close tolerances are good enough for uh, what I'm doing and I just thought I'd let you see that there once again is the dial indicator use the back of the jaw of the vise as your reference take into account the, the diameter of your tool and then take your time on your first couple and then once you get comfortable let it rip alright if you like su subscribe please give me any tips either on filming or on technique if you have any. Thank you.